Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So first up today to everybody still waiting for the FSD beta, you have over an 80 safety score, you've driven over 100 miles on autopilot in the last 30 days, and you still haven't received it, one more thing to check. If you're in the FSD beta queue and you're running either .24 or .28, you may have to wait for the next FSD beta release because this current one is apparently running on .20 and Tesla does not want us going back to software versions because then they lose all of those updates. One potential issue could be if you're in the beta queue and you're running either .24 or .28, this current version of the FSD beta is actually built on .20, so you may have to wait for the next FSD beta update, which is supposed to be shortly after AI day. Tesla doesn't want its customers going back to older software versions because there could be all kinds of bugs, and then of course you lose all of the other updates with the latest software. So if you're on one of those newer software versions, you may just have to wait for the next beta release, which is supposed to be .3, as I said, shortly after AI day. Next up, speaking of AI day set to be this Friday, you may have seen this teaser image tweeted out by Dennis Hong. There's actually more to that story and more in this picture than you may have thought. This teaser image was originally tweeted by Dennis Hong, who, if you go to his bio, he's a professor, but he's also the director of Romola. If you go back to Tesla's AI day number one, you may recall this, Romola director, Dennis Hong, hints at possible involvement with Tesla's upcoming AI day. Dennis was also the individual that originally tweeted out this image that became once again the teaser and the invite for Tesla's AI day number one. He could not share any more detail as he was under an NDA, but it's pretty clear that he is involved with Tesla's AI team in some way, shape, or form. And back to the image in the background, of course you see things like the hands that we've seen on Twitter and other places for AI Day. We have part of the AI Day invite here, the Tesla logo, the word cyber, we have the dojo stack up here, but there's one thing that may be going overlooked. If we come all the way over to the left and zoom in on this railing, you'll see this one lone red marble right on the railing. Now, I have no idea what this could mean. It could absolutely be nothing, but the fact that it's there in the first place is interesting at the least. I'm fully expecting over 80% of AI day to be right up here, but I'm still very excited nonetheless, as at some point, more and more people will wake up to the fact that Tesla is not just a car company. Moving on, as has become the end of quarter tradition for Tesla fans, Electrek has come out with a report talking about the massive end of quarter push that we should expect this week. In an email from Tesla to employees that Electrek always seems to get its hands on at the end of the quarter, says we will be delivering a very high volume of vehicles to eagerly awaiting customers during the final days of Q3. To help ensure we can delight as many customers as possible, the delivery team is requesting additional support with key delivery execution tasks. And here are some of those specific tasks. Now, we've talked about this many times in the past. Yes, Tesla wants to end these end of quarter pushes and these delivery waves, but clearly they're not there just yet. The latest publicly available estimate from Troy Teslike was as of September 14th, and he was at 366,000. His next update will be the last day of the quarter, September 30th. He's also a great follow on Patreon. If you don't, I will link his Patreon below. But just to give you an expectation, Tesla should release their results on Sunday the 2nd. For the last 10 quarters, as Troy pointed out, Tesla has released their quarterly results on the 2nd of the month. Either way, quarter three should be another record for Tesla as previously the high watermark was quarter one of this year when Tesla delivered 310,000 vehicles. And if Tesla does indeed deliver 365,000, orange is an estimate for quarter three, that would mean to hit 1.5 million for this year, Tesla would need to deliver 570,000 in Q4, which yes, is a huge number. On that note, we have this report from Reuters saying that Giga Shanghai is only going to be operating around 93% of the factory capacity for the remainder of 2022. Now, the article and the sources did not give a reason for this, so of course a lot of people are speculating and maybe falsely assuming that this is a demand problem for Tesla, 
My first pushback to that would be, there's still a ton of demand in the European market. There's long wait times and a big order backlog. So in theory, Tesla should be able to operate at 100% capacity at Giga Shanghai. And even if the demand right now for that level of production isn't there in the local Chinese market, Tesla should still be able to export that extra production to the European market. Which would lead me to speculate that this could be a little bit more supply chain and parts driven, but once again, just my thoughts. Two more things, we know after the upgrades, Tesla can produce 22,000 vehicles out of Giga Shanghai per week. Now at 93%, that means Tesla will only be producing around 20,500 units per week, made up of 13,000 Model Ys and 7,500 Model 3s. And further in pink, we just talked about this yesterday when it comes to Tesla's market share of the battery electric vehicle space. It's only going to come down from here as more competition comes into that space. Reuters is somewhat making it look like Tesla's demand in China is weaker relative to the overall new energy vehicle market. They said Tesla's China sales jumped nearly 60% in the first eight months of this year, saying that's much weaker than the overall market for new energy vehicles over the same time, which saw sales more than double. So again, just remember, much of this overall doubling in the NEV market has been driven by a lot of new entrants coming into the Chinese NEV space. And secondarily, Tesla was shut down for those production upgrades. They've had all kinds of issues this year. So part of this discrepancy can also be attributed to Tesla's factory being shut down in Shanghai for some time. Point being, nothing to be concerned about right now. Next up, a week or two ago, we reported that the US Department of Transportation had approved 35 of 50 states when it comes to how they will spend this upcoming federal money to roll out more EV chargers. Well, fast forward to today and that number has gone up to 50 states being approved. You may recall the pool of funds available is $5 billion over the next five years. So right now the first tranche has become unlocked or available to the tune of about $1.5 billion for all of the 50 states. The Department of Transportation has laid out some guidelines, not strict rules for how they would like to see the states use this money. They should be for DC fast chargers, all of the stations should have at least four ports capable of charging four EVs at the same time. They should install EV charging infrastructure every 50 miles or 80 kilometers along interstate highways to also be located within one mile of the highway. These federal funds should cover around 80% of the installation costs with the remaining 20% being covered by private or state money. From a separate AP News article, they said by year's end, drivers could start seeing expansions and upgrades to existing highway EV stations in states like California, Colorado, Florida, and PA, but construction of new EV charging locations could begin by next spring. One other thing to note, several states have expressed concern that they would not be able to acquire charging stations that meet the American-made provisions. It may delay implementation by several years. This coming from some people in New Jersey. Here we have a report from Drive Tesla Canada where we have two Tesla officials low key pumping up its used car business that most investors are still sleeping on. These Tesla officials said the used car business is one of the company's fastest growing verticals and larger than some publicly traded used car sellers. In a job posting for a used car position at Tesla, they said it's a fast paced, high impact role in one of the company's fastest growing verticals. Tesla has complete control over its sales and service channels as it sells directly to customers. This allows it to control used Tesla cars when the owners upgrade. This is another major differentiator for Tesla to have control over the used Tesla market. As the Tesla fleet grows and more owners get new Teslas, maybe trade in older ones, this is an ongoing business that, like I said, most people sleep on. And the Tesla official said, most people don't realize Tesla runs its own vertically integrated nationwide online used car retailer. It's as big as some publicly traded used car retailers you've definitely heard of. Next up, I won't spend much time here, but Tasmanian did some good digging and found there may be some ties to the people that are behind this Man vs. Musk short film where the producers are paying influencers $100 to basically bash Tesla and Elon publicly. Well, the people behind this project have some loose ties to some competitors when it comes to Tesla and specifically Tesla Energy. 
For now, I really don't think it's worth our time to go through all of this in detail, but of course, if you're interested in this, I will include this article below. Again, I just wanted everybody to be aware that this was going on, generally speaking. I'll also include this Reddit thread below where there's some more detail. And finally, I'll be the first person to tell you do not judge a book by its cover, but I did find this video with Jordan Scop, one of the producers behind this whole short film. This will also be linked below if interested. Next up, from some sources, we get an update on Tesla's 4680 production when it comes to both Cato Road, the pilot line, and what's going on at Giga Texas. So at Cato Road, Tesla has now hit a run rate of over 100,000 4680 cells per day. Doing the math, 100,000 4680 cells divided by 828 cells that are going into each structural pack, that would be enough for 120 cars per day. If we assume capacity level production, meaning seven days of production a week, that would be enough for 840 structural packs per week just from Cato Road. Going back to Tesla's Q2 call this year, you may remember Drew Baglino said, we expect to ramp total 4680 production to exceed 1000 per week by the end of the year. When he said 1,000 per week, he meant 1,000 packs per week. So 1,000 packs times 828 cells is 828,000 cells per week. Coming back to today, the latest run rate out of Cato Road would be around 700,000 cells per week. And remember, Tesla has all of quarter four to hit that 828 cell per week figure out of Cato Road. So based on what I'm hearing and this data, I would say that Tesla's 4680 progress at Cato Road is coming along pretty nicely. And further, some exciting news for 4680s out of Giga Texas. They're now officially producing 4680s locally on site at Giga Austin. Yes, super low volume at the moment. They may not yet be sellable or being put into Model Ys yet, but that should be around the corner. They're producing around 10,000 cells per day, which would be enough for around 12 cars per day just from Giga Austin. And they're continuing commissioning and yes, progress is being made. That's important because again, going back to the Q2 call, we learned that Tesla is aiming for Giga Texas to exceed the weekly output of the Cato Road pilot line by the end of this year. Now granted, this was before some of the challenges that we had learned about. And yes, Tesla would have to 10X the production coming out of Giga Austin to even be on par with Cato Road. And that's if Cato Road stands still, which seems very unlikely. So the bar is very high, but we'll track this throughout the remainder of quarter three and Q4. And it's worth noting that in about one quarter, the duration of quarter three, Tesla went from basically producing zero 4680s specifically at Giga Austin to now producing around 10,000 4680s per day. So they went from zero to 10,000 a day in roughly a quarter. So can they go from 10,000 a day to 100,000 a day in a quarter? We'll see. Here we have Hertz teaming up with BP Pulse, BP's charging subsidiary, to roll out more EV chargers. Some will be for the public and some of course will be for Hertz to maintain its fleet when it needs to charge vehicles for customers. They didn't provide any detail on what this split would look like between how many Hertz will use to charge its own fleet versus how many will be open and available to the public. BP Pulse is saying that these chargers for Hertz are going to come with special software to help Hertz manage charging its fleet. As we know, electricity prices can fluctuate given the time of day and the demand, so the software should help Hertz charge at the optimal time. And separately, Hertz has said that over 25,000 Uber drivers have already rented Teslas to use as their vehicle to operate its Uber service. Next up, what we have here is Toyota effectively being peer pressured by different pension funds and investment managers and some of the public in saying that the way it's been handling comments about the EV transition have been subpar and and investors don't like how they've handled the situation. This is really good, check this out. Mr. Toyota has been trying to understand why some investors and environmental groups remain unconvinced about the company's electrification strategy. He's assigned an advisor to ask influential people in the auto industry in the US and Europe for their views on Toyota's EV efforts and learn why it isn't getting the credit other automakers have. 
If you've been watching the channel for some time, you know there's a lot more where this came from, and the question becomes, I mean, how obtuse can these executives be? An overseer of New York City's pension funds have said that these conversations basically about Toyota's EV reputation, they said dialogues have been constructive, but there's been nothing to hang your hat on in terms of them changing their behavior. He said, if we're measuring companies by their actions, we've gotten more of a response from GM and Ford. So if all of the sudden now we see Toyota become publicly very pro EV in word, as always, don't watch what they say, but let's watch what they do. It looks like Toyota's executives need a public relations specialist to now tell them to, hey guys, you need to be more positive about the EV movement, or you're going to lose investor money. Moving on, we talked about this late last year, but now it seems to have become official. VW subsidiary PowerCo, the one focusing on batteries for electric vehicles, has indeed teamed up with Umicore to focus on the European market, and eventually they should have enough capacity to build 2.2 million EVs per year, but this could be a decade out. And remember, much like Tesla, VW is multi-sourcing, so this is not the only source for VW when it comes to batteries for EVs. The partnership aims for 160 gigawatt hours of cell capacity per year by 2030, which is enough to power around 2.2 million EVs. PowerCo and Umicore plan for an equal 50-50 partnership between investments, costs, and profits. And of course, like many people are now trying to do, aiming to be one of the first fully integrated supply chains from mining to refining. Next up, Tesla is hiring for app developers both in Palo Alto and in Austin to help build the Tesla app for solar, Powerwall, and Tesla vehicles. I'll include a link to one of the job postings below. Next up, I know many people have fallen off the ARK Invest bandwagon as everybody has a very short-term mindset and they want results right now, year over year, but technology funds are just not going to work like that, especially in this macro environment. Full disclosure, I am personally not invested at all in any ARK funds, although I'm a supporter of Kathy Wood and ARK for the research they do and making it public. That said, ARK Invest has launched a new venture capital fund, so if you have just $500, you'll be eligible for this fund. 70% will be invested into private firms and 30% public companies, of course, focused on technologically enabled innovation. Fund is available to individual investors initially through the investing app Titan. Here we have Sawyer sharing a pretty cool satellite image of Giga Austin, and from way up in the sky, you can start to read the word Tesla. Remember, the rest of this roof should be filled out with solar panels, and the white space will, of course, be the word Tesla. So that will do it for today. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.